Hi, this is George Magdalene, pastor of Hope Chapel Foursquare Church in Hawthorne. The message you are about to hear is called, It's Your Serve by God's Power. It's from 1 Peter chapter 4, and it talks about the fact that when we serve, when we serve God, when we serve others, it should be in the strength that He provides. I believe hearing this and reading the scripture, meditating on them and applying them, will help you to be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. God bless you in Jesus' name. The rest of you can turn to the book of 1 Peter. Amen. We will be in chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. <laughs> serving the Lord and serving His people, serving His church, is an awesome opportunity. We have an awesome opportunity. And I want to talk about uh, serving, serving God, serving His people. Peter gives us some very good insight that I'd like to look at. Let, I'm going to let the Word do the speaking right off the bat here. Let's we'll start with verse 7 of 1 Peter chapter 4. Verse 7. Peter, a man of God, he went through a lot of transformation as he walked with Jesus. Went from Simon to Peter the rock. Went from sheepish and fearful to bold and courageous. And here in verse 7, he reminds us the end of all things is near. Written 2,000 years ago, how much, how much more true is this today? The end of all things is near. Would you agree? Yes. Therefore, be clear-minded and self-controlled. Why? So that you can pray. We were talking about prayer this morning. And, and listen, God does still answer prayer. Amen. You have not because you ask not. Ask and you shall receive. Amen. True, there are things that we need to keep in mind as we pray. We've got to make sure... Uh, it's, it's God's will, right? First, first John. We've got to make sure that our hearts are cleansed, right? The psalmist said, if I hide sin in my heart, the Lord will not hear me, right? True, we have to pray in the name of Jesus, right? Jesus himself said that, whatever you ask in my name. And true, we need to ask in faith, right? Mark 11 says uh, that, that faith is very important. Mark 11, 24 Whatever things you ask for, believe that you have received them and they shall be yours. So Peter's telling us here, be self-controlled, be clear-minded for this purpose so you can pray. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sins, doesn't it? Amen. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Without grumbling. Oh, i got to do this again. <laughs> Each one of you should use whatever gift he has received to serve others. That's why you have the gift. Faithfully administrating God's grace in its various forms. Uh, when, when I had each of you stand up, uh, uh, you know, uh, by the different ministries that you serve, various forms. You're using your gift. You're using your, your abilities and so forth. If anyone speaks, he should do as one speaking the very words of God. Awesome responsibility. If anyone serves, and this is our, our key verse this morning, he should do it with the strength God provides. I will repeat. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides. Why? So that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. He may be praised. Not me, not you. Did you see this good thing I did? Look, it's on my resume now. Wow. Uh, I might go into some, some of my pet peeves later on. But it is for His praise and for His glory. Not accolades that will get, not pats on the back and so forth. For His praise, for His glory, through Jesus Christ. To Him be glory and power forever. And ever. Amen. Let's say it together. Amen. 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 So the goal is to faithfully administer God's grace. We'll be talking more about grace in its various forms. Remember, grace is God's unmerited, undeserved 
favor. It is getting what you do not deserve. Everything that's good in your life is because of the grace of God. It's not because you've earned it. As a Christian, we come out of that stuff. We come out of the, you must earn this and do, you, you must do, do this and do, the, do, do that. We come out of that and everything in our life that is good is because of the grace of God. A little louder, amen, please. Amen. Grace is the vehicle by which we receive every good gift from God. Have you received anything good from God? How about some peace? How about some encouragement? How about some healing, health, and restoration? You got that by way of the grace of God. The, the fact that He loves you because He loves you. The fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross, therefore making, uh, making it now available to you. All those good things. Question, why is it so important for us to administer or offer God's grace? First, God's grace brings salvation. Jot that down. It brings salvation. That's why we administer God's grace. That's why we, we still function today. Uh, this church is over 25, 26 years old now. I've been here over 14 years. We've been ministering or administering God's grace. Why? Because it brings salvation. Amen. Titus 2, verse 11 says, The grace of God that brings what? Salvation. salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passion. You know what they good? To live upright lives, right? Holy and pleasing to Him while we wait for the blessed hope. Who's the blessed hope? Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ the glorious appearing of our great Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It brings salvation. That's why we offer grace. It's also the way that every other blessing, is, let me repeat that, it is the way that every other blessing comes, or every other blessing from God is offered to mankind. One more time. Give me one more time. It is the way that every other blessing from God is offered to mankind. Every other blessing, everything you need comes because God is gracious. Amen. Not because you've earned it. Are we getting there? Yeah. Okay, we're going to talk more about grace in just a moment. But if we're going to serve, and this is serving you know, in the church, in this ministry, serving as you're out on your jobs or in school, uh, serving uh, your, your neighborhood or your, your, your friends and family, if we are to do that, this is commands us to do it in a supernatural strength. Because if we don't, we're going to burn out real fast. Okay? So, I want to share what I call three strong reminders about God's strength. Remember, we are to serve in the strength that He provides. Three things about God's strength. Number one, we find through Scripture that it is a process. It's a process. We read in Hebrews chapter 11. I love that the whole chapter talks about all the mighty men and women of faith. And he gets down to verse 32 and he says, What more should I say? Because he mentioned all these people of faith. What more shall I say? He says, I do not have time to uh, tell about Gideon and Barak and uh, Samson and Jephetha and David and uh, Samuel and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms administered justice and gained what was promised. How did they gain what was promised? Through what? Through faith. Good. Who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fire, the fury, the fury of flames, and escaped the edge of the sword. Now here it is. Whose weakness was turned to strength. Amen. See, they were just normal men and women like you and I. They were weak also. Do you ever feel weak? Do you ever feel like that you have absolutely nothing left to give? They felt that way too. They were weak. But the thing is, their weakness was turned into strength. They went from weakness to strength. It is a process. Growing in God's strength, experiencing His power is a process. There's another scripture in Psalm chapter 84. Uh, let me read portions of that too. I love Psalm 84. <laughs> he starts off by saying, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. He says, My soul even 
my soul yearns